Some say American citizens have been losing faith in their government. Others may feel bureaucracies are entrenched, unable to change. Maybe that's because the stories of the process of change have not been told. So today you'll see a change process developed by one group of public servants in our city that cuts across all department lines. Our staff brought about this change for a group of citizens they discovered had gone unserved. And in so doing, they developed a system which will streamline service delivery to many others. As we ready for the 21st century, I'm proud to introduce the City of Seattle employees in a passport to services. The story you're about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Once upon a time, in the kingdom of Seattle, there was a very good king who gathered all his sir knights and lady knights at a round table. Well, actually, it was a long table, but it served the purpose of a round table by getting all of the good knights together. This was such a good kingdom that there were lady knights as well as sir knights. At this meeting, King Seattle stood high and said in a big, strong voice, Let there be access. Well, all the sir and lady knights knew exactly what he meant, and they went right to the citizens of the kingdom who were in wheelchairs and people who were visually and hearing impaired to ask their advice on how to provide reasonable access. Then the city artisans began building ramps and installing elevators and widening doorways and lowering telephones. The kingdom bought TTYs and fax machines and made sure there was open captioning on videotapes and interpreters for the hearing impaired. There were audio tapes and prints in braille for those who couldn't see. And they installed lots of handicapped parking spaces as well as lifts on buses for those who couldn't walk. The Kingdom of Seattle became so accessible that an award was given, and the good king was very happy. Then one day, Lady Knight Peggy heard from one of her ladies who was waiting that a man who couldn't talk was turned down for lower utility rates because the wages for his attendant, who lived in, was lumped with his SSI income. The lady who was waiting was just following the rules and counting the income of everyone in the household. But somehow, it didn't seem right that because of a rule, the man didn't get his lower utility rates. Then Sir Knight Fred heard of some people who didn't get their bus services. Metro offered them a nice lift, but that didn't give access to the people who couldn't call to get their bus card or their door-to-door -door transportation. Then excess trouble came to the famous Sir Knight George, the Dragon Slayer. He was famous because he had slayed a racist discrimination dragon, and an ethnic bigotry dragon. And once he even destroyed a dragon called Sexism. But this time, George the Dragon Slayer heard of a woman who was too late for her energy assistance money because she couldn't fill out the application. The Kingdom of Seattle had a nice anti-discrimination law, but it didn't give access to the woman who couldn't write. The three brave knights, Peggy, Fred, and George, decided together to see what they could do. At first, they just sat all day and all night, hearing over and over, Let there be access. Woe is me. People who cannot talk don't seem to have access. And people who cannot call us on the phone don't seem to have access either. And those who cannot talk, write, or call haven't any access at all. Three brave knights sitting all alone, not knowing what to do. Then George the Dragon Slayer suddenly exclaimed, Wait a minute! He had just remembered a program in the Kingdom of Seattle that provided access to people who cannot speak for themselves. 
It was the nurse oversight program run by Sir Richard, who was also a famous knight. Sir Richard was famous because he served two masters when everyone had always said it couldn't be done. He served not only the Kingdom of Seattle, but the King of the County as well. Sir Richard was famous also because he loved doing things others said couldn't be done. The three brave knights found Sir Richard packing to leave. Quickly, they asked how it was he could provide access to all the people who couldn't talk or write or call. Sir Richard told them he didn't have time to talk as he was running off to his other King's County in Kent. But he did toss them a couple of ideas over his shoulder. I take access to the people, and I find the people through my computer. And with that, he was off with a smile and a wave. Sir Richard was always happy with his work. And that was the third reason he was famous. The three knights didn't see any people coming off of the computer, but they did see and hear. Let there be access. Now the three knights were even more determined to give their good King Seattle the access he had ordered. Sir George started with writing on a royal scroll. He said if they wrote down what Sir Richard told them and thought about it, maybe, just maybe, they would understand how to give access to the people who couldn't talk or write or call. When Sir George was through, the scroll looked like this. Get people from the computer. Take access to the people. Serve people where they are. The three knights thought about the three notes. Sir Fred finished thinking first and said, I like number two the best. Take access to the people. While Peggy's favorite was, I like number three, serving people where they are. Still, Sir George wondered how Sir Richard got the people from the computer. But they all agreed that the people were the most important part of giving access. Suddenly, Lady Peggy cried out, Wait a minute! Lady Peggy remembered another program where all the big and little people, young or old, have access, whether or not they can talk or write or call. It was the Park Department's special services. The three brave knights found special services director, Gamey Dame Donna, out in the field. There were lots of others there also, and they seemed to be communicating with everyone. How do you give access to everyone? We asked parents and friends and teachers and aides to interpret for the people who don't talk, because they know what they like. And we give access any way we can. We lasso them, hook them, trip them, and trap them, but we get them. I've got to go now, because we're all going to a cookout at Camp Long. See you later. Meanwhile, back at the long round table, Lady Peggy exclaimed, Aha! Gamey Dame Donna said they get them any way they can. Good old outreach. And she said they met with them and their parents. And when we slew a dragon on isolation, we began by meeting with the people who had been isolated. And Gamey Dame Donna said that their parents had to interpret for them at first. Wow. When my grandparents first came to Seattle, they didn't know the language, so they needed interpreters too. This problem is bigger than both of us. In fact, it's bigger than all three of us. They knew only one person could help them with this problem. Their boss, the Duchess of Humans. To their surprise, she was waiting for them. The three brave knights had never before realized that the Duchess of Humans had eyes in the back of her head, as well as the front. This allowed her to keep her eyes on everyone. And she also had her ear to the ground, so she knew everything that everyone was up to. The Duchess even had her own royal scroll, upon which she pointed out everything the brave knights had been discovering. Nurse Oversight. Clients come via computer from Medicaid lists. Nurses go to homes to check on attendant services. Park Department special services. Campers come via outreach in schools, group and nursing homes and workplaces. 
Parents, friends, and advocates interpret. Citizen volunteers give extra access. You have done good work in uncovering the good works of others. Now it is time for us to meet with the Countess of the People for the final word. It is all arranged. So saying, the brave knights and their duchess were transported to the magical part of the kingdom inhabited by the Countess of the People, who immediately stood up and applauded the brave knight's good work, which already appeared on her royal scroll. Take services to the people. Reach out to the people. Listen to the parents and advocates of the people. Because all the members of the Royal Council are close to the people they represent, the Council has its own special access system. They make sure there's always an exception to policy clause. For instance, when the Royal Council passed an accessory housing ordinance to allow sweet old grandmothers to live in a separate apartment, parents and advocates told them about people who couldn't talk or write or call, who might need some special accommodation for their live-in attendance. The exception to the policy clause, when used wisely, can give access to people who can't talk, write, or call. And because all of the members of the Royal Council are somewhat magical, the exception to policy suddenly appeared on the chalkboard list. Use exceptions to policies for the people. And then the whole group of knights and royals made the last leg of their journey right up to the very top of the king's castle. The king, who was meeting with his Duchess of Rights, who had brought him some royal parents and wizards of advocacy, welcomed the report of his royal servants. The king read everything right out loud. Take the services to the people, reach out to the people, listen to the parents and advocates of the people, use exception to this policy to serve the people. This is good. And today, the royal parents and wizards of advocacy have been telling me they needed a one-stop service for the people. Just one card and nary a word need be spoken. No forms to fill out and no cards need be made. A card that is a voice for those who cannot talk, a pen for those who cannot write, and an instrument instead of a telephone. I think we should call it a passport to services. All the court agreed that passports should be issued to everyone on Sir Richard's computer list, everyone in the park department special services, and all those anyone ever heard of who couldn't talk or write or call. And so in the great and good kingdom of Seattle, the Sir and Lady Knights developed a card. And the card had a picture, and the card had codes, and the codes were all of the services the people needed. And just as Good King Seattle said, they called it a passport to services. And all the citizens of the Kingdom of Seattle had their own passport, which they or their aide or guardian or even their friend could show, and no one would ever deny them. The King of Seattle was once again happy and his cousins on the Royal Council were happy too, because everyone had access. And all the people who couldn't talk or write or call lived happily ever after.